Hey, can I? Jesus, that's a mess. <laughs> I hope, I hope I'm live. Hi. Hey, can anybody hear me at all? Fantastic. Okay. Um, so let's get this party started and uh, we shall move on. Um, I would just like to, uh, first and foremost, uh, as it's kind of now two minutes past 12, uh, I should have got started but two minutes ago. Hi, hi there. Hey, how are you? Um, I'd like to just say uh, hi to all in Bangladesh, and I, and I hope that I find you safe and in good spirits in the most extraordinary times. Uh, my name is Owen Southgate, and I am uh, the, the co-founder and uh, lead mentor of an organization called Nitha, based in Sweden. And as you can hear by the accent, my, I'm not Swedish, I'm, I'm English. Uh, and I, I, that's, that's perfect, good to hear you. <laughs> so you can hear me clearly. That's excellent. Now, I've um, been very, very fortunate uh, to have been invited to talk to you guys uh, in Bangladesh and obviously a wider audience by those guys from uh, the Sport and Hope of Indep and Independence uh, in Bangladesh. Those, I know that uh, the guys there are doing a phenomenal job. It's If you look at the website and you check out the Facebook feeds, it's just incredible work being done out there. So it's um, impressive. And again, during this uh, extraordinary time, it's uh, even more important to be able to kind of hook into uh, to what brings communities together and, and nothing does that quite like sport. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm very, very proud to be an active part of uh, a live cast on Facebook today. Um, it's currently, as I say, 12 o'clock in Sweden and I'm assuming it's about four o'clock in Bangladesh. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I'm uh, very privileged to be able to join you here this morning. Um, okay. So, I am here uh, to talk to you about uh, training during this uh, extraordinary time of COVID, uh, COVID-19. And I understand at the moment, uh, the lockdown in Bangladesh stretches all the way until the 16th of May, which means there's a, a lot of time uh, to uh, consider what it is you are going to do with yourself um, as a person either participating in sport uh, or someone who's uh, just doing it for for recreational purposes or someone who's coaching or someone who participates but actually maybe even takes it a little bit more seriously as a as a player so it's um i'm here for you guys to to speak to me and to, for us to chat together about how it is we can uh, train better during this time um i have got a few things that i can highlight to you uh, and an instance of that um where we would normally see the, the the kind of productive dynamics of sport being the physical. I actually really want to kind of go to you guys. Hi there. <laughs> it's nice to see this little feed down the side of, of people saying hello. Hello. It's nice to nice to see that you're here with us. Thank you for joining. Um in this in this instance of time where we have such an extraordinary opportunity, and I call it an opportunity because I understand the hardship that people are going through in in what is a uh, a, a tough time um, what tough times can present in especially within the context of sport and it's a great lesson learned for people who participate in sport hardship and and challenge well in this instance of covid i think what we need to be aware of is is that this is an opportunity um, especially when it comes to delving deeper into the the crux and context of our work in sport. Um, so if you're lucky enough to be working with, with groups all the way from uh, adults through to people with uh, disabilities or working with boys or girls or, or just working with children in general, you, you can really see that this is a chance to uh, get, a, get a grip of um, uh, get a grip of the, the the learning, get a grip of the the circumstance, and and make it work for you positively rather than negatively. So um, I've I've always adhered to the idea of a growth mindset. I've, I love the concept of of understanding that failure isn't actually failure; it's a chance to to move forward. And it's exactly the same when it comes to challenge and hardship. We all 
have the opportunity to use um, e extraordinary circumstances such as COVID as a way of being able to move forward and do better. And in this instance, training doesn't just within the context of sport uh, and practice doesn't doesn't set itself only as a physical entity. It sets itself as also a, a, a cognitive and intellectual opportunity to grow too. So yeah, um, I love the idea of what we can do in this instance. If you are struggling to come to terms with not being an active part of sport, you can learn you can find many ways especially nowadays with the the, the event of uh, social media and and uh, the, the internet being able to get onto there to access information there is so much high quality information now to, for you to be able to access and you know educate yourself in a way in which you can perform better as both an athlete and as a coach or someone who's just interested in you know uh, casually participating in sport or, you know the the whole platform and genre of learning is has opened up to a much much wider demographic in which you can access that kind of information and i think it's important that we consider that again the, the, the physical act of training in sport can't be the only thing that we define ourselves by um and so with that in mind we need to uh, to just open our minds up and be prepared to, to search for four things that are going to make us better if I'm, for example, a player, um, I would be spending a lot of my time on YouTube right now, uh, attempting to kind of define the roles that I find comfortable as a player within a team. Um, and as a coach, I would be doing my very best to in encourage myself to develop a better understanding of learning, what it means to, to, to be someone who facilitates and engages uh, an environment of learning for, for children. Um, those are the things I'm currently doing now. Uh, I'm always consistently attempting to try and educate myself every day. Uh, and it's those things that I actually find that are more crucial to the outcomes of, of, uh, of, of growth and development as a, uh, as a player or as an educator, um, rather than actually the physical. Though the physical, obviously, it, it's the, the end sum of the, the efforts from, from here. So it's, um, so it's important to kind of get into that. Uh, if you are in a situation where you um, find yourself constrained, which at the moment we all are, uh, you know, even in Sweden, where Sweden seems to have taken a bit of a different approach to COVID, still some level of constraint applied on on uh, the, the the global the global movement. But in 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 somewhere like Bangladesh, I can imagine that's something uh, constraint in and around something like COVID actually comes with a, a lot of relatively adverse consequences and i think with that in mind again taking the, the, the steps to having a growth mindset rather than looking at it as something that's fixed and and something that's actually uh stops you from kind of doing the things you want to do take it as an opportunity um constraint can be a good way of being able to to find solutions and grow as, as, as a result so covid's the constraint but we have now uh, opportunities to use that in our favor. Now, if I'm looking at the, the principles in and around learning, it's an, ecolog it's an ecological dynamic. Um, the, the ecology and the environment that surrounds you is ultimately going to be the thing that gives you the, the opportunity to learn. Um, and, it's, and it's those direct experiences um, under, under, under the basis of task, under the basis of objective, under the basis of constraint, that are gonna be able to give you the, the, the real depth of, 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 of learning um, that's required in order for you to improve. And that's the same when it comes to playing on the football pitch as well as it is under the banner of being constrained by COVID, for example, not being able to go out on the streets and, 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 and play the game, for example. Um, in that constraint, you have the, what I, I fundamentally said is the, the, the two biggest issues for, for, for any, anybody attempting to try and get engage themselves in, in a learning journey, be it again playing on the football pitch or be it um, in the schools or, or just at home or, or whatever. And that's the space and time for it, having the space and having the time to do so. Now, that means within context, your though your space might be limited in terms of your your ability to, to physically engage in the activities of sport your time for learning is now just being expanded as, as a result and i understand that 
for a lot of people, there might be limitations in terms of access to uh, to learning resources. Having said that, I think it's, it's pretty clear that, that being able to get hold of books, to be able to critically reflect and actually even journal your, yourself, your own your own understanding and, and you know, construct an idea or construct ideas in, in, in which it challenges your thinking. They're things that you can do by yourself. Now, and it's, it's the same when you obviously access resources when it comes to uh, going on, online, which for a lot of people watching this, hopefully today are going to get, uh, they already have access to. Um, that means that going back to uh, the, the whole point of time for learning is something that's really quite um, up there in terms of opportunity. And for me, um, I would I would advocate massively the chance uh, to, to take that time, not chronologically per se, but really from a, from an internal level, take the time to kind of reflect upon what the things that you do. Um, if I if I break it down into some component parts, I would like to you know, indicate that reflection is ultimately the best indicator of of your performance as a a player or a coach because what it on that basis of reflection a it's unique to you as an individual but b the feedback that you get from your external influences and then how you internalize them and interpret them are are crucial for you moving forward and the clearer you get a a, a sense of how you reflect uh, and a, a and the and more confident you get at understanding yourself through reflection the better you are at uh, at the things that you do and that in that in the instance of being an educator within sports specifically is one of the fundament, fun, fundamental characteristics of operating at a world-class level is the opportunity to reflect critically adhere to, to a certain set of values that ultimately allow you to measure that reflection uh, and beyond that move forward um, and that's an internal process it's something that doesn't uh, it isn't const isn't ultimately constrained uh, with, with any external outcome it actually comes down to you being um, aware and awake enough as an individual to take that time to reflect upon the things that you do good or bad um, bad is bad is not the greatest word to use it's good or maybe not so good um, but could be doing better now with that in mind i think the environment itself is, is always going to ad adhere uh, to a certain set of values often or not your you, you yourself as a as a, a player a coach or someone who just participates in sport they engage themselves both on a, a personal and cultural level they're the values that kind of uh, constrain the movement forward as, as we go. They're the things that kind of hold us to what it is we do. So to be clear in and around what your values are when it comes to working with people in sport, um, those things are going to be the the, the, the the little tick boxes that are going to allow you to understand how to reflect or to better target your reflection in your practice so that you then know where to go in order to access the, the information you need. Um, and that for me is um, kind of crucial in terms of your, your your training time now under the banner of COVID. Now, to understand the, the, the need for people to get, get uh, busy physically, uh, whatever space you've got available will work, um, especially within the context of somewhere like football. Football, football requires, um, well, many sports require a certain set factor of skills that actually can be be maintained within a very very small space. It's just again when it comes to you, the the divergency of your thinking, the the, the growth aspect, the growth mindset uh, connection to your learning. If you see a, an opportunity, even with the smallest of spaces, you'll come up with an idea about how to to develop and grow and and to you know exercise physically. Um, with that in mind. Look at the space that's available to you and connect it to what's relevant to your sport. Um, what things can you get out of this now that's going to allow you to maintain the the the, the, the physical premise uh, that's going to allow you to get back into playing the sport once we're all out of our houses and able to go back to um, a, a sort of sense of normality. Um, yeah, and in that instance, you know, again. 
that that whole process is set up by an idea of actually taking much more interest in the, the cognitive domain in which learning becomes a central pillar of, of what it is you're trying to achieve because we really can't do the physical things until we uh, instill an idea in our heads uh, of, of what it is we can do with this um and in there it, there is a, a fantastic opportunity to to develop learning that then enhances the way that you then apply yourself on a physical level anyway i'm going to stop talking for the moment because i would like obviously people to uh you know come forward and if they've got questions at all just give me give me a heads up i do do a little bit of talking so i'm not a uh, <laughs> I'm not shy at, uh, at at talking, as you can tell. So um, anyway, but uh, but I'm, I don't know everything. So please also challenge me on this uh, on the live feed too. Um, I hope everybody's uh, you know happy with what I've said so far. Anyway, um, just have a look at the live feed. I've just now scrolled down the bar, which for a technophobe like me is is an extraordinary feat of. Uh, of effort so i've just now seen that there are more messages in here any tips to, tips to stay fit during corona uh, the uh, i think the obvious ones are to be be aware of the space that you have available to you and and make it fit the 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 outcomes of your sport you know, or the, the 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 required attributes of your sport um health health in respect to nutrition and so forth obvious candidates for for um for you know cognitive engagement we have to you have to think about what it is you're putting your in your body to make sure that you are able to maintain um you know a, a decent level of physical health in order to then go out and get keep fit or, or, or work to get fit uh, um yeah, uh, the, the the it's it's quite a broad it's a it's a broad question, and I and I and I would if you've got any any kind of um, specific um, aspects of how you would try you know, what you have available to keep yourself fit during Corona, then, then give me a heads up because I might be able to give you a better answer at that point. Cool. Okay. So at the moment, can anybody give me any indication of how Bangladesh is, is currently coping with uh, coronavirus? And then what kind of an impact is it having on you um, as a result of being someone who participates in sport? Uh, would you, is there anybody out there that would like to give me uh, an indication of uh, the current situation out there? Nope, not so much at the moment. Okay, <laughs> it's not an issue. Okay, so going, I can feel the space, which is great. Um, I got, got no problems in feeling that. It's it's uh, in the instance of our time and uh, as participants within sport, especially from the educational perspective. Um, it, it, over in over in Europe, Europe in particular, but I think it's a worldwide thing now. Now that people have access to, or it's such easy access to resources online. Ah, uh, oh, okay, thank you. So it's been a lockdown since last March. So it's, it's been a while. It's been the same for people in the UK, for example. So I've got family in the UK who had the same length of time uh, to to ponder on on, on uh, being stuck indoors, but. Uh, the lockdown doesn't finish until May, is is that right? May the 16th, sorry. Am I right in thinking that? Cool. Oh, we'll, we'll allow for some answers to come through. Uh, but in, it, again, in the instance of why I'm here to talk to you about training during uh, the COVID uh, pandemic. The, 
the emphasis I, I, I can't really state enough the emphasis on the ability on the engagement of coaches and, and players and people who are interested in sport to to take a a, a different view of how um, sports can be impacted positively and look if you're a coach the whole emphasis of, of your time in sport is as a facilitator of, of learning. You, you, that's your job. You know, yes, a lot of people can get caught up by the idea of, of the finite, finite outcome, which is the winning of a game or the, the, you know, the winning of a trophy at the end of the season. But ultimately, if you're working, for example, in youth sports, your job is much, much, much broader than that. And, and in that instance, the the principles of, of the training development, even in this time where we don't actually have the chance to get out on the pitch is still, still cru crucial to you in terms of what it is you can, you can grow and develop on in your own mind as a, as a coach, the, the real, um, the real substance in the activities of a coach is the ability to understand how people learn um, and how to interact with other human humans and, and develop relationships that are actually going to embed um, not only a sense of um, of of collaboration in an objective goal, but going going much deeper than that. Give people the opportunity to see that actually uh, participating within sport is an active journey of learning um a very deep journey of learning and that there are many associate associate parts to the learning journey that actually embed itself in other parts of of life and i think when it comes to being a coach getting deep into the crux of learning what again, what it takes to understand how humans engage uh, themselves in Within within the con within the context of sport, but in the wider context of, of sport society as well. Well, that's that's fundamentally important in terms of your growth and your development, um, because what it then does is it allows you to be able to impart um, and facilitate um, a process in which when people come and join your environment and get involved in the things that you you facilitate, they they not only walk into something, but they're walking into something of substance, something that's going to give them substance beyond the pitch, beyond the, the physical realms of running around on the football pitch is going to give them a chance to be able to learn skills that are there for life. Um, and that's, that's, that's crucial. And again, you know, just to reiterate the COVID scenario right at this moment gives you the chance and the time to, to, deep, you know, to reflect and get deep into uh, learning more about what it is that's that's important for um, creating that that environment. I know there's a, a, a lot of people out there who already do this. So in this, it's not that I'm kind of preaching solo. It's it's a, a conversation I take almost on a daily basis when I'm meeting people. Uh, there's an incredible community of, of coaches and parents and, and educators globally who categorically understand that uh the the depth of coaching doesn't come from the the result the, uh, of, of winning a game of football the depth of coaching comes from the results you see in 20 to 30 years time when you are still uh, able to view the individuals that you supported in a way in which they they see their time with you as nothing but positive and 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 beyond that uh, fundamental to their life journey um, that's that's a crucial outcome, um, and, I think, and there are a lot of people who do that. I've, I've been recently very lucky to have been out in the Philippines to to have, have um, experienced that directly. And what's great about the Philippines, uh, different to, to what goes on in Europe generally or Western culture anyway, is in the Philippines there are people who, through huge levels of adversity still managed to create such wonderful in you know learning environments in which the dynamic is just you know so so strong and structured uh well structured with with uh care and duty and love and, and discipline and you know they're, they're all factors value human human values that are factored that don't necessarily need could good pitches and uh, money or to, to, to make happen it just takes someone with with uh, a, a internal sense of, of 
um, I suppose, love uh, and, and caring for others in order for them to then engage, to go out there and engage. So, yeah, anyway. Um, any other questions out there at the moment from anybody who's listening? Not at all. Okay. At the moment, is there are there any coaches who are currently still managing to get out and practice out in in Bangladesh? Is, it has, is there actually time uh, for you guys to get out there and, and deliver? Um, that's that's a really interesting one because in in Sweden at the moment, the the act of sport is is still very much up and running we still are able to get out onto the pitches with our, uh, our our youngsters in particular though adult football and um yeah it's um it's uh it's strange to kind of know that there's something going on as a, as a pandemic that's shutting every else down but in sweden we still are able to kind of engage in participation i wondered if it was the same in bangladesh sorry i've just now picked up uh, a, another message I, I love your philosophy of coaching. Thank you. Uh, that's a, a nice thing for you to say. I'm sometimes I have a, a little bit of a hard time articulating it because my my brain is going 100 miles an hour trying to work out what to say. But it's 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 I'm fueled by by genuine love for for helping others. So that's so I really appreciate the fact that you love that philosophy. Thank you. Is there a chance that we can have an opportunity to learn from you? Well, of course. Um, you're 18, you're playing third division, I'm assuming in, in the Philippines. Tell me more about your experiences. Um, what's What would you like to learn specifically? It's, oh, uh, m maybe you're asking, could I actually come out? <laughs> so, so, I know it, would be, it would be a pleasure to come out to Bangladesh and, and uh, engage in um engaging the the, the culture and, and the dynamic out there it's if, if my experiences of southeast asia have anything to go by i think it would be just a, a profound moment in my journey uh, as, as an individual so so yeah that would be that would be a lot of fun It'd be a lot of fun to come out to bangladesh we'd have to organize it once once the borders are reopened No, I'm, I'm going to hope I'm going to pronounce this right, and I'm rubbish with names. Um, Naladri, is it? Is it Neil Adri? Neil Adri? Hi, Neil Adri. Uh, give me an indicator. You're 18, which is a fant it's fantastic that you're listening, and I really appreciate the fact that you are. Um, give me an indication of, of your interests philosophically when it comes to sport. And you obviously play football, so there's a reason why you play. What, what's, what's the situation, mate? No, there's nothing worse than dead air. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can fill it some more. Okay, so um, if I looked at the, the context of uh, the... If I looked at what... Bang, see, for me, perfect. Thank you. You've saved me because I was going to talk about communities of practice and that was a long-winded, long-winded and long, 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 long conversation. Um, so well done. Uh, okay. Um, I love, you love playing football because it makes you happy. That's fantastic. What aspects make you happy? That's the really, the really interesting thing I'm, uh, for me. Is that it's happy happiness is a, is a very very general platform and it's a fantastic platform to be but what are some of the specifics that sports gives you in terms of making you happy and it was whilst we're waiting for Nadri to to get back for me what makes me happy is the um, is the deep sex, the, the deep deep sense of connection. Uh, the deep uh, sex is six in Swedish, by the way. I don't know why I've used that, but anyway, it, the deep sense of connection that um, it gives to myself, not not as a result of 
not a result of anything that kind of influences me externally. The feedback that I get from people, for example, that's great. And the winning of games, that's great. But what makes me super happy in that instance is the the real depth of connection to the self. Yeah, football's like a football and sport. And football for me has been very much a spiritual journey. Um, and oh, there we go. Good. So it's uh, so. And Eladri just highlighted it. He says, I'm a, I'm a defending player and it makes me happy when I protect my strike uh, to score goals. Good. So it's a, it's, it's a connection to a job well done. It's a, a connection to uh, feeling, um, ha- having self-esteem connected to, to a moment in which you've been competent enough to manage. Those, that's a really, really, really cool thing to have. And I think, I think if you're a, if you're able to tweak that away from the the more egoic concepts of of what it's what that statement potentially can highlight and come back to to the the aspects of of happiness from an internals perspective especially when you've just now shut out a striker and uh, stopped him scoring goals it's all about being able to to re- reaffirm to yourself that uh, your your um your connection to your sport is giving you, you uh, something back. It's giving you uh, not only the, the, the physical element of the game back to you, but, but it's actually reaffirming that cognitively. Uh, <laughs> uh, no problem. It's really nice that we're getting. Uh, I, 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 hope you, I hope you find this uh, fruitful in terms of uh, guidance. And, and, I, and it's uh, a pleasure to be able to give it to you. Um, I am, as you can, you can see, I'm very much connected to the, uh, the, the, the internalization of sport and what it means to be able to participate within it. So it's a, it's a, it's a much, much deeper connection to sport that I have than just the physical. So I hope you appreciate that. And, uh, and I'm sure that if you do participate in sport and you're involved in, in you know, even, even delivering sport as a, as a coach, you you are connected to what you do in terms of your time and your energy as a result of your internalization you know, of your happiness that you that you draw from being a part of of it seeing other people being happier and that makes makes it even better but you know being internally connected to what it is you do but at the same time seeing others and help aiding others to be internally connected is an incredible thing uh so um i hope i hope that's not detracting away from the physical aspects, but it's they're all they're all interconnected. You can't be physical without being uh, interested internally. It's the the difference between being motivated and not. You, you, the, those who are highly motivated see something from within. People who are, are motivated from the external perspective often are just are limited by those external external forces. Internal internalization almost is a provides a limitless uh, point of, of energy uh, when it comes to engaging in sport. So it's, it's, I think it's important to try and get to grips and understand that more, so that you can impart that knowledge onto people that you work with. Um, so going back to so, sorry, Naledri, uh So going back to what you've said about uh, you're a defending player and you protect. It's, it's a job well done and it's uh, something that you can you know you can connect to yourself as, as something that you've been successful at going back go, going back to the, the internalization of, of certain things and you know external ex, externalizing success through the, the, the aspect of a result or game that's that's one thing but again it limits itself to only believing that success in in sport as, is uh, is the trophies that you have on your table or the wins that you just now have but they're temporary forms um in um, um, unfortunately they're temporary forms that kind of connect themselves to only one part of the human psyche which is the ego which is this is a, that's an interesting conversation to take maybe another time but in in respect to success internally well that's that's a completely different ball game because what's what success is for you is ultimately going to be different for for someone else but if your values are set in a way in which you know you're you're in balance with your 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 behaviors you know especially to to yourself and to other people then success is just feeling good uh, about the fact that you've been able to do something correctly or something properly success also looks like failure 
uh, it also looks like the uh, an opportunity to learn from from the, the from getting it wrong uh, because success becomes the learning opportunity as a result of of that moment. So. If your striker, for example, so that Maladri has got the better of you that day, that's just as as better, a good an opportunity to to draw happiness from as a result of the the learning outcomes that could be achieved from that. Then actually shutting the guy out during ninety minutes, it's a it's a it's a it's a mindset. It really is a mindset that you can um, take forward with you, um, and yeah, it's. It really kind of takes a lot of a lot of um, of the, the limiting things external that we see externally impacting us through our participation in sport um, out of the equation. So yeah. Uh, Ruhal, uh, I'm, I'm gonna I, I, honestly I'm rubbish with names. So I apologize. Uh, once again, thank you for the comment. That's a very very nice thing for you to say. Um, I would like to hear your philosophy. What? In, in a very very small sentence to try and start, you know could you could you present me with an understanding of what, what it is you do in sport and why you participate is there anybody else out there who would be interested in, in giving me an indication of of why they participate in sport and you know at the moment as it stands in this situation with covid how they're managing to cope with the the limitations the constraints that that we currently find ourselves in because training going, going back to the to the article uh the, the title of this this situation today is training during covid um tough in terms of constraint but not so tough if you're capable of being able to think outside the box so um if anybody can give me an indication of what the things that they're attempting to try and achieve, that would be great. Sure. So I was just interested to have uh, to gain your opinion or, or your experiences of your time uh, in uh, under the COVID banner yeah you know, the, the situation we kind of find ourselves in uh, are you a player are you a coach if you if you're either of them you know can you give me an indication of how you're uh, there we go <laughs> good so i've been i'll be interested to find out how you're coping yeah for me, interestingly enough, just to kind of fill in this the, the little bit of space before I, I can just get the answer, the uh, I'm managing to kind of uh, fill in my time again through just you know, uh, getting hold of as, as many resources as possible that they're going to give me a better uh, chance to understand how to apply myself better. Um, that, that's as simple as that gets. Um, there are some people to, to that you can in fact if I can kind of put it in the feed beyond this once we've finished I'll put a couple of links in the bottom to give you uh, a, a chance to, to search for stuff that's relevant I can I'll, I'll do that but there's a lot of a lot of uh, good articles currently out there at the moment that are discussing sport on a, on a level that's it's probably not been discussed. Yet. Hey, fantastic. Okay, so it's so you're a player and and you love to play as a striker. Okay, so uh, are there things that you're currently doing at the moment that that you are that are maintaining your your, your premise as a striker, both from a, a cognitive perspective, an intellectual perspective, or from a physical perspective? And what connects you to sport as well to the, the role of a striker? What what are the things that make you? Uh, that, then, that you enjoy as a being uh, as being a part of a strike uh, a strike team or being a striker. Okay. Well, again, I can feel, feel this is good. It's a kind of a weird scenario, isn't it? When you're kind of waiting for people to kind of, you know, you know run, run a conversation where you're the only one talking. It's, it's, a, it's a good experience, but it's, uh, 
sometimes you kind of feel okay so for me interesting enough when i played i played in three different roles i played is a ah cognitive excellent so what it, so what it is you're doing that's uh thank sorry Rahul, and, and apologies for everybody trying to listen you know, i'm kind of flitting in between looking at the screen and talking about other bits and then coming back in again so i appreciate you holding on um okay so what a, what are you doing on a cognitive level in order to improve yourself as a as a striker how are you developing the mind um what i used to do um as a player i played as a left uh left winger as a youth player i played left back as uh and then to center back and then center midfield and kind of got everywhere really um yeah the aim of the game for me when i was playing was to establish establish awareness is the first thing that i that i hooked into so i i would i'm relatively short i'm, I'm one meter 74 um and being being like being a player of, of, of that height and, and attempting to try and you know, maintain the physical aspect of it it's, it's not so much of a problem you people can do it but you have to kind of maybe search for a, a certain as, a set of skills that are going to give you a little bit of an advantage now i was also relatively fast so i kind of did that but uh but i was more interested in the, the art of the game the philosophy of the game so ultimately my my cognitive route went, went down the the, the route of the, the the pathway sorry of understanding um and being aware now when it comes to the technical and strategical aspects of the game the things i'm i'm really interested in is the awareness the, the, the awareness aspect of space and time on the pitch and the, and the geographic format of the game um that's that's kind of inside the space of the the pitch you know we we have principles within the game that dictate and determine how we how we play and they're invading game principles and beyond that the the, the, the way to try and encourage um uh, a, a positive outcome from a football match is to kind of look at well, what what things do you need in order to really um yeah to score a goal uh to be able to defend properly and it's it's understanding that space and time for both constituent parts or both teams are an incredibly important part of being able to be successful and it's um i philosophically went down the route as a player of trying to evaluate the game from a space and time perspective so i was always consistently searching you know my, if you look at someone like xavi or yes there's not like say that i was anywhere near xavi or yes there's um capacity nowhere near it but, but what the thing that i was more in, interested in was the with the ability to search for spaces that are going to give me the time to play and as a striker hey there we go um and as a striker strikers work predominantly into that space in behind or, or at least if you want if you work for as a false nine you're working from the space high in order to come up and receive to, to then bring the team and secure its position further territorially now those here we go so Rahul's got said, I, I play as a local player. That's why sometimes I have to cover all areas like left midfield and right, but I'd love to play always left wide. It's, uh, it's a nice position, left wide. Uh, this one of my, it's my favourite. You, you get to, to touch touch the uh, the white line with your boots, you get nice and wide, and it gives you opportunities to, to be involved in different aspects of the game. It also gives you a vision, a view of, of, being, of knowing just how much you can affect the game by bringing such width to the team it's uh it's, it's a wonderful moment and actually if you're able to receive the ball on a regular basis it's also a great great space to be able to attack uh, defenders or at least isolate defenders 1v1 which is something i used to love doing it's nothing better than, than being able to receive the ball confidently knowing that you've actually got space to attack you've got space in front and behind that defender in order to try and manipulate and that's 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 a cool thing now it's good to see that yeah as a strike you're you're in a position where you're actually gaining lots of different experiences but going back to the point of, of understanding the game better from the training capacity now especially if you're researching because you can't get out on the pitch try and find as many tactical and strategical articles articles in and around the, uh, the, the 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 principles of the game the invasion game concept um especially in and around the geometrics of of football um i've i've followed some some uh you know, not loosely followed but i'm 
because football is a game of adaptation too. And obviously formations kind of have a, a major impact uh, on where, what space is available where. But I've generally uh, ran with an idea of what they call seven lines. And, uh, and the seven lines principle kind of just cuts the pitch up into geometric, uh, in, in, with lines across the pitch that then set a precedent of, of where players have not have to go, but where players can go in respect to the options that are of, that, that can be presented and available, and our ability to get forward, and that's that's my um, general overview approach of uh, attempting to kind of try and coach my teams. Is that if we look at the pitch as a an amount of space, how can we now section that pitch in a way in which we can actually create the space uh, the space we need to be able to attack. And on um, on occasions or on many occasions, react to, to the loss of in terms of transition, for example. And it's that's when that's when the real deep crux of uh, of the tactical strategic elements come in. Um, and th those are things that coaches really should be trying to to dig again deep into when it comes to developing their understanding of the game. Um, yeah, uh, as you can hear, all I advocate really is is to open your mind to a growth mindset in which you you take you take every opportunity possible to learn to be better uh, better at what you do but either a as a human being or b as a football player and that's that's really the the crux of it and if you are that deeply interested in in being the best you can possibly be then you'll take the time to research that and from a strategic and tactical standpoint the, the 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 leaders of the game at the moment really kind of get this idea of of possession and and pressure um and those two things combined and understanding the necessity for uh, for domination uh, for, uh, of, of necessary of domination through territory and uh, understanding the notion of the possession as, as a way of being able to manipulate this Look at numerical supremacy, for example. Teams who create new, uh, numerical overloads in some areas will obviously ultimately um, create spaces elsewhere in order to attack. All those kinds of things, you will you will be in in that instance either a better player as a result of finding those things out, or as a coach, better at being able to impart the the right and current knowledge um, that's currently circling. Um, I've noticed that I've been able, uh, able to ramble on for like 46 minutes, which is amazing. Um, and now in the instance of it now, if I can kind of lead you into uh, giving you a, a, a perspective of training beyond COVID that's, uh, that could not potentially revolutionize the way that you coach, but, but ultimately give you some, some fresh insight to how you coach, then I would... I'd very much like to, to take the, the chance to advocate um, looking at concepts like uh, TGFU, which is teaching games for understanding and, and constraints led approach, uh, which is all based in and around how you create training sessions that, that are um, facilitated through tasks. So, so it's not explicit in terms of the coach says, I do this and the players then go and do that. It's about being uh, competent and clever enough as a coach to understand the details of the game to the degree in which they can create tasks related to the game in training as an opportunity for learning. Um, and the great thing about those task constraints, if you're able to create them, is that it allows you as a coach to step back away from the training environment and see the detail for what it actually is. Um, rather than being involved in training all of the time as someone who kind of instructs like a, a, um, a conductor in an orchestra, you are as a coach able to to willfully and calmly step back away from the, the training environment in order to assess and evaluate. Well, a are the players capable of and competent enough to be able to deal with the tasks and the constraints that have been applied? And beyond that, are they capable of? Um, are they now in a position where they can implement the strategies that, that are actually representative of the tasks that I created? So, for example, if the task is that I want to keep uh, have a team keep possession of the ball, I might designate some areas of the pitch in which I want the team to keep the ball in more. And in that instance, if they're capable of doing it under a rewards-based system, for example, of scoring points every time they go through that area or an area that's been constrained or targeted, then 
the more I see that, the more they get it, uh, or the more I can see they're getting it. And as a result, I can then connect all of that task constraint to the principles of the game and then go, okay, well, we've, we've gone through a process of doing it, which is what it's about, learning by doing. And this is the, re the, the, the relation it has to the game and the principles when we go out and perform and compete. And that's, and that's something I would advocate very heavily now is that if you can find time to research TGFU or, or constraints-led uh, practice or approach, um, then, uh, then I would do so. And again, I'll put some links on the bottom to allow you to be able to, to gain an insight to that. But it's, um, yeah, it's uh, a really, really important thing to consider that not only what are you doing currently that's going to kind of give you everything you need, for, especially under, again, these extraordinary circumstances, but what you can do uh, or what you can do in order to prepare for when COVID goes away and people are coming back into to participating in sport. It's uh, it's a key, a key thing. Um, you know, objectives for prep yeah, for, for objectives for preparing for the future are, are, are important might not necessarily be the outcomes of the future but if you're a coach again if you're preparing yourself to to be a better coach once covid has gone and your training sessions resume as a result of that that situation you you could be walking into that now if you spend time learning you know researching and learning and, and, and developing and growing uh walking into that situation with um with a renewed sense of motivation and a, a better set of skills that you're going to be able to to provide your your players with and as a, as a player having that depth of understanding in terms of what the game represents from a, from a cognitive standpoint it, you can walk into your environment and again demand that not only from yourself but your players and your team uh, your, your your team and your coaches uh, so that you kind of uh, start to establish your own set of standards for what it is you want to see on the pitch because that, that will only help you grow it will only help you get better quicker um, and to, it, it's important to have a um, a an, an, ind a, an inv individual position of investment in which you're able to impart your energy and your motivation onto the people that you're that you're working with, either as a player or as a coach. So yeah, um, yeah, um, cool. Uh, we're now coming up to the last eight minutes, which is, seems to have flown by. But as I say, I can talk quite a lot, so uh, I apologise to anybody who's got bored. <laughs> but I don't think I hope you haven't. Um, is there are there any any more questions with eight minutes to go, uh, in which we can wrap up this? This chat. Um, really interested to see uh, if anybody's got anything else that they want to hear. Um, yeah. If you are, I was waiting for those those things to come through. If they do, um, if you are in a, a situation as extraordinary, I don't know if you are as we are all in a situation as extraordinary as COVID at the moment, what's clear is that the, the, the normal pathways for engagement within society and in sport are, are no longer relevant at, at the moment and even not potentially no longer relevant beyond COVID. Things are going to change as a result. This means that the, the attention and the time that you have now really has to be if you're dedicated to what it is you do has to be um defined by changing uh yeah of course you, of course you can have another session for sure uh, no problem at all um in respect to the the, the dynamic you're going to have to adapt and adjust in a way in which you can step into what it will be a new a, a relatively new world uh beyond covid it's going to give you every chance possible to maintain your your health and your status and uh, in in the world. Um, that means that when it comes to playing as, as something as, as um, holistic as you know, or getting involved in sport from a holistic standpoint, you you have a lot to benefit from by creating you know, creating a notion of adaptation within your mindset in which you um by the time this kind of falls away um you are in a in a, in a better place to to step forward and and, and improve and i think that's the, the the whole the whole um crux of of 
playing sport and being an educator and being a human being is that we are here as as as, as points of adaptation but we adapt we adapt to the values that we hold uh, to ourselves and to others um the the, the more pure those values are the the, the better at, uh, better the, the the process of adaptation we do have and as a result the the, the things that we then project are, are are much better as a consequence so it's yeah I hope that you guys all, you know, see the idea. The idea. Well, I hope that I'm kind of portraying an idea that actually try and be as authentic to your uh, uh, to yourself and your value. Be trying to try and be as authentic and as close to yourself as you possibly can uh, from a value perspective. Um, and yeah, um, try and make sure that when things blow over, that you are ready to. Um, ready to step into the context of, of society and sport with with new vigor and and, and new motivation um, connect to yourself deeper and you'll be a better sport a better person a better sports person for that okay um so rahul you've just now asked oh it would, be, it would be really nice if we get another session from you of course happy to do so um and it's uh i, I hope i don't have to waffle too much as, as much as i have done this time but it's um but i'm very happy i'm very happy to connect and I can have a conversation with the guys uh, about you know, focusing on specific parts of the discussion we took today, um, and I'll be, I'll be very happy to take those those conversations. Um, yes, yeah, so and no problem at all. Um, is there anything that you've taken away from? Uh, so the, the guys have kind of engaged. Is there anybody that's any, anything that you've taken specifically from my my chat or my, me talking for the last hour? That, that's, that's stuck out as something that you agree with or even even better disagree with um be interested with four minutes to go it'd be fantastic to see a little bit of feedback in terms of what you've taken from the last hour i'm gonna give it I'll give it a little bit of time once again, I'm just going to kind of highlight as we wrap, as, as it's kind of winding down. Um, thank you once again to the guys from uh, Sports for Hope and, and Independence. Um, that's it's a phenomenal cause, and, uh, and it's again, it's been an honour to be able to have, have sat here uh, representing my organisation, NIFA. Or oh, it's here. There we go. Point which way? This one here. Uh, in collaboration with with you guys via your feed I'm, I'm super super happy with that if there's anybody who wants to actually get in contact with me via yeah they, that's exactly how it is being authentic is the only way it's the only way because it's the only way that you can really maintain a true level it's a true state of happiness um, authenticity has has a set of values connected to it and they're often humanistic so you know, reflect upon the on the on the the values that you hold central as the authentic self, and, that, and and that's then connect that to how you engage in sport, and that's that's a really when you do that, it's, it's a very very cool moment. It's very enlightening. Um, anyway, going back to it, um, thank you for thank you for the the chance to get out here and, and talk about what it is um if you want to find me um you're more than welcome it's uh, owen southgate on facebook and it's uh, nifa sweden um which I, again i'll put in the links at the bottom of this at the end and uh we we are an organization that pr focuses on and educating young people that's our job uh we want to encourage the next generation of, of coaches and leaders and athletes to really take a take a deeper more insightful view of what sports has to offer them um we have unfortunately lived in a i think in recent generations we have a view that sport is all about just the physical aspect of winning and then you can see how many kids have dropped out of sport as a result of that in europe the, the numbers are staggering because kids find that they det are detached away from the the uh the real reasons for why they want to play because the demand on them is actually just the result of the physical. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's on, on that basis alone. Yeah, we, we as an organization tend to try and encourage young leaders to see the depth and details within sport when it comes to being a decent human being. So if you want to go and have a look, take a look at the website, um, you know, check us out. I'll put the links on below and please by all means try and like our page with 
got pages on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. So yeah, just find us and add us and try and see how we, you know, uh, what we do. I and mean, if there's any way that we can help to support you directly, please get in touch. We'll try and do everything we can to make that happen. So uh, yeah, but um, and uh, and thank you um, for Hannah. I think I'm going to pronounce that right. On behalf. Um, on behalf of Bangladesh, thank you for uh, so much for joining us. Yes, look, it's it's a pleasure. Thank you, uh, Bangladesh, for allowing me to uh, to sit here and, and talk to you guys all the way from Sweden. It's been uh, it's been awesome. Now we've 15 seconds to go. Um, once again, thank you all. I hope you have a, a great rest of the day and um, and enjoy what is a fantastic opportunity in life. Yes, it's, it, for some it's extremely hard, but, but switch the mindset in a way in which you can feel good. And then we'll hopefully uh, see it. The yeah, sport is the only way to get out of fear. Let's hope and for the beautiful future. Love that. And, and absolutely. It, there's always going to be a beautiful, fit, uh, beautiful future. It just depends on your mindset. Thank you, guys, and take care. See you soon.